Action buoy. Here's a big girl. Here's a good girl. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Okay, off you get now, buoy, please. Yes, you do. You need to jump down. Come on. I'll help you. Oh, it's very high. Oh, oh gosh, microphone. Hang on, everyone. I've just thrown Betty's blanket on top of the microphone. Drama dramatic, dramatic dramas, first thing on a Sunday morning. Actually, we've already had quite a few, to be honest. We, uh, we accidentally locked my daughter and her boyfriend out of the house. Shame. <laughs> what else has happened, Chris? And also, it's all moved around in here this week. So Chris was over there, and I used to be able to see him, and now he's over there, and I can't see him. I can Shame. Hear him. <laughs> I can hear him just. But I can't see him. Anyway, I hope you were all well. Oh, now, <laughs> she always has a funny five minutes after she's been on camera. Well, don't we all, eh? Um, I hope you're all well. <coughs> Excusez-moi. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. We are making amazing macrame table mats. To, well, I'll tell you the story of this, actually. Um, my other daughter asked me what I'd like as a Christmas present and I said oh I'd really like some new table mats because we've just painted the table in the conservatory if you follow me on Instagram you'll have seen the drama with the paint color anyway that's now sorted um, anyway could I find any table mats that I actually really liked I decided I kind of wanted either natural ones or I wanted yellow ones but being obsessed with a scalloped edge you know these things are, are difficult to manage, but I had to have one with a scallop. I couldn't find one with a scallop edge. Cut long story short, got some, didn't like them, sent them back. Anyway, thought I was just, you know, sat looking at this one day in the studio thinking, hang on a minute, I'll make my own. I'm al I always think that. I was thinking, I can make that, I'll just make my own. Anyway, here we go. A um, couple of weeks later, here's my finished macrame table mat with the scalloped edge, of course. So, um, I know some of you have bought the kit now to make this, these. So you can make four of these out of one of our kits, or you could make two of these and some little coasters to go with them, okay? And the colours are all on the shelf behind me that we do them in, so you can choose different colours. There's a blue, there's a lovely olive green, actually, which I really like. Hang on, how to point the wrong way when you can't see what you're doing? lovely olive green that's the yellow i'm using there's a there's a pink <laughs> i can't do it there's a blue left a there's bit a right a bit it's left really a bit. weird doing that um anyway and they all come with a green felt back and then i'm going to show you how to do my favorite thing in the whole world bullion stitch i put it on instagram yesterday as billion stitch because i typed too quickly bullion stitch <coughs> rose which i will also be talking about later on my new mexican hearts kit because that's on there as well anyway i'm going to show you how to do that as well so without further ado i've got one that i have already done to show you uh how you finish that off so we'll come to that in a minute but what you start with is a square of the green felt so you get enough felt to make four as i mentioned uh, they are 29 centimetres in diameter plus, plus the scallops. Okay, so quite sizable, uh, very pretty. Um, and yeah, 29 centimetres. So uh, basically you want your square of felt to be about 30 centimetres square. And then you need to find the central point. Well, how do you do that, Gillian? Well, you can do it with a ruler if you like, or a tape measure. Um, or you can fold it into quarters. And mark it with a pin. I know, how sensible is that? So that's what I've got on the table here. Then here's my, my macrame cord. Now I am going to be using, wait for it, wait for it. Gem tack for all your sticky needs. 
I don't know why I'm mouthing that. He's I doing. love saying that. <laughs> he loves it. He actually wants to make a little jingle for it this week. Anyway, we didn't. I haven't paid us. <laughs> You're desperate to get some sponsorship from Gemtac. Absolutely. I, Nobody I else will do because they I, fulfill all my sticky needs. <laughs> I don't think it's ever going to happen. But anyway. Um, I think maybe we should run a petition. Anyway, so I'm going to be using Gemtac, but you could also use a glue gun, okay? And that's fine. Glue guns, I love glue guns, but they're just a bit immediate, aren't they? And hot. So <laughs> I don't really like using them live on, on, on this now. But also, I do feel like in this instance that the Gemtac, because obviously it's going to dry a little bit more slowly might give you a bit more kind of time time that's what we need isn't it time anyway so i'm going to use the gem tack okay what else do you need i think well everything comes in the kit that you need apart from the glue okay so you will need the glue obviously um, and then i've just put a little pin if you can go to the overhead now my sweet please Bing. so i have just put a little pin in the middle of my square okay Apologies for my manicure this week. I did it very late last night. And I think it was in the dark because <clears throat> <clears throat> I haven't done a very good job. Anyway, that's kind of beside the point. doesn't really matter, does it? Now, here's a top tip. When you're starting off coiling this in the middle, I'm just going to do that, actually. I've got a central point. Just do that. When you, when you start off coiling this in the middle, you can leave a hole, all right, like that because you're going to be putting your after you've done it you're going to be putting your little rows in the middle and if you want it to lie completely flush and flat to put your plates on then that's what you need to do although i have to say with the one oh i was just going to show everyone then chris you're so hot well, on the I'm getting just, just, go back go back I'm, go back go back, right. go back. Okay. so i have to say the one that i've done here okay it does stand proud a little bit if you can see that um ooh. But it's fine. You could put your cup on it. There's my cup of pins. Uh, what could you put on it? Oh, no, here we go. This is better. Here's my glass of water, look. Oh, look at that. It's a bit wobbly. Actually, look, I tell you what, when you put a plate on it... There we go. Anyway, you might want to do it flush, is what I'm saying, all right? So let me move that one out of the way. Okay, so... When you're starting off in the middle, you can leave a little hole. All right, so now I know where my central point is. What I'm actually going to do is just going to plop some glue down on there, okay, to get going. And I am just going to leave a little hole in this one and see if I can make it sit flush. All right, so I'm just going to put a little bit there. Now, this is terribly pleasing, is one thing I would say, okay? So all you're going to do is you're gonna pop your gem tackle, whichever glue you're using. There's round. other glue? <clears throat> is, that, is that another possibility? Yes, There's other I glues think it is. other than What gem you do need to make sure, however, if you're leaving a hole in the middle, is that this is perfectly round because you don't want to end up with an oval, okay? So do make sure that this hole in the middle is perfectly round. I think you could probably eyeball that. The other thing I would say about the gem tack is that if you do get a little bit on the top of the mat, um, it doesn't matter too much because it dries clear, okay? So it's not the end of the world if that happens. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just carry on plopping this around. So you can see, what I tend to do is I just lay one um, round at a time, one round's worth of glue at a time, and I just glue as I go. So what you want to do is just have enough glue so that you can lay down the cord but you don't want so much glue that you end up getting it up in between, really. Because it's then more likely to sit on top and you don't really want that. So I'm just going to keep it quite close and go round, okay, like so. And what you'll notice is that the macrame cord is quite twisted, just the nature of the cotton, okay? And really, you want to keep it twisted here, okay? So you don't want it to untwist like this, because as you can see, the separate strands would separate if that happened. So do keep it twisted, and you might find that as you uncoil it from the um, roll, it does feel a bit curly and coiled, but that's fine. Keep it curly and coiled, okay? 
because you want that and it gives it a nicer look I think as you as you when it's finished so I'm just going to carry on just blobbing so if you were doing this with the hot glue gun you'd I'd, I'd say you probably do half a coil at a time and then you want to get it stuck right down I'm just going to uncoil a little bit more okay and then around there like a lot and I'm just going to do a couple more of these and then I'm going to move on because obviously this is very repetitive but what I would say about it is that it's quite relaxing actually and it's quite pleasing because it's like flat and it's just it's just pleasing isn't it Christopher is it pleasing to watch oh yes it's it's like one of those oh god I've forgotten the name of them now those oh, the things thing... that you watch and listen to. Yes, where you where that man rakes the sand. Yes. I have found myself watching him sometimes. Is have it a you? man or a woman? It's I a man. Know. Is it a man? He's Japanese, isn't he? Well, he lives in California. Oh, does he? Oh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, um, yeah, it's quite zen-like. It's a bit like watching someone doing the ironing. What would you know about that? No, it's true, actually. <laughs> no one ever irons anything in her house. But do you know what? I remember my mother doing the ironing, actually, if she's watching. I remember you doing the ironing in the kitchen. Not that I ever sat and watched her, actually. It's not, not the sort of thing I would do. But I would, I would say that it's probably, it's just, well, if you watched someone doing it, it's probably a bit like that. But yeah, it's very pleasing to do anyway. And it's also very simple, okay? It's just, I don't know, yeah. It's very uh, satisfying, that's the word. Uh, okay, I'm just going to unwind a little bit more. And you can see it's just slightly curly when I unwind it. Maybe we'll just do a little coaster sized one here and then I'm just going to carry on. Just do another half and then I'll move on. I don't want anyone yawning or losing interest here. OK, um, right. OK, and so on and so forth. And you can see I have got a little bit of the glue here. All right. But because I've left my little hole in the middle, I think that's just going to sit a bit more flush once it's done. All right. OK. So once you have, do you want to come back to me a sec, my darling Christoph? Thank you. Um, <laughs> once you have done that, what I tend to do is leave it to dry until I, once I've got to the very outer bit and it's 29 centimetres across, I leave it to dry because it actually feels quite damp with all of that glue on the felt. And I leave it to dry upside down, all right? So I'm actually just going to move this one out of the way now and slide my other one into place. Move it over there. Um, and I've got this one actually sitting on a cutting mat because I was using a very sharp scalpel to cut it out, which you don't need. You can use scissors, okay? I was using a craft knife uh, just because I've got one, okay? So when you get to the very outside... Okay, now, now the thing I don't know now, actually let's, let's move the cutting mat so that I can see my mark on the table. There we go, all right. So what you need to do now is cut off the outside of the felt, but what you don't do is you don't cut the cord, okay? Don't cut the cord because we're gonna make the scallops with it. Well, obviously it's optional, you don't have to make scallops, but if you want to make scallops, don't cut the cord yet. Okay, right. So what I've done is I've basically cut it out. If you can go back to the overhead for me, please, Chris. Um, what I'll do, actually, is I'll just continue this with scissors to show you that that is entirely possible. You do not need a craft knife. This was the little sort of scalpel craft knife I was using. It's ever so sharp, actually. Any craft knife would do. Um, and then I'm just actually going to show you how a, a pair of sharp scissors is just as good. Now, if you don't want to see any of this green felt poking out from underneath, then make sure you don't put the glue too near the edge on the very edge. I mean, I don't mind seeing a little bit of it poking out. But what you want to do is you just want to snip around where you've got it. I think you might need to move that oh, into the middle, Gillian, sorry, for the darling. people on Instagram. Yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. There we go. All right, so you just want to snip around, okay, leaving the cord so it's going to look like that on the back. All right, so let me just get rid of that bit there. Okay, and then I'm going to turn it over. Let me try and get it in the, in the right place. Hopefully that's the right place for the, the grammars. Right, you can see all the coils and it's all nice and dry. I, I actually did this bit yesterday, but I did, did the outer bit this morning, so 
I think it's all right though. Okay, so what I'm going to show you now, I'm just going to move it slightly that way so hopefully the Instagrammers can see, is going to show you how to do these scallops. All right, so what, what, what you want to do is ideally is measure, I think in the instructions, I think it's every six centimetres or something like that. Yes, there. And then what I did was I got a little dressmaker's pin and I just popped that through the cord and into the table mat like that. Then I get my gem tack. Okay. Have I got this in the right place for the close-up, darling? Go to the close-up and No, you need to move it over a little Go bit on, to then. your left. Go on then. There. Okay. And then I just do a little blob of glue. Now, when you're doing this, be careful you don't glue the, um, the pin. Okay. So make sure the pin is not involved in the glue. Um, otherwise, you won't get the pin out because gem tack. Cue Christopher. Sorry, he was reading messages. <laughs> gem tack for all your sticky needs. Because gem tack will glue um, <laughs> metal to fabric. Will it? To metal to fabric. <laughs> gem tack. It's amazing. So, uh, so you need to be careful because you don't want to glue your pins in. It's not a good look having your pins glued in. Uh, all right, so I'm just going to measure another six centimetres. Okay. And then... I'm going to put my next pin in, comme ça. And then I'm going to do my next blob. Am I in the right place? Oops, sorry. If I've moved it, it's now come out. Oh, golly. Okay, let's push that back in again. And then I'm going to do my next blob of glue. Okay. And then so on and so forth. Okay, so you would then go round... The whole goddamn table mat. Okay, so from there to here, and so on and so forth. Okay, and that's all there is to it, folks. Apart from one last thing that I'm going to show you. Moving this one out of the way, slight blue piece here, isn't it? And then here's one I prepared earlier, which is my finished one. Okay, so I just want to show you the back of this and show you. Because you'll think, well, what do I do with the end once I've cut it off? Here's what you do with the end, my friends. Whoopsie. Right, so as you can see on the back of this one, that's finished. Here is my end, all right, that I have then brought down and I've cut out a little piece of the spare felt into a little square. Might be screen slightly darker, I do apologise. And I've stuck it on top with some glue. All right, um, and it's as simple as that. So that will hold it down, and there you are, that's done. So then moving swiftly on then to how you do the little uh, rose in the centre, which I just think finishes it off rather nicely. Okay, so you'll have loads of bits of felt left over at the end, a bit like this. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna cut a little square out of it. Doesn't need to be very big. An inch or so. I've done mine slightly bigger, but you know, poetic license. And then you're going to need the pack of yarn darners that are in your kit. Okay, love a yarn darner, as you know. I use it for a lot of things. I use it for the bullion stitch because although you're meant to use a milliner's needle, the reason being the milliner's needle has the eye pretty much the same width, if you like, as the body of the needle, i.e., the eye doesn't stick out. Um, yarn dart, the smallest yarn dart in the, in, in the pack is pretty similar and of course if you're using a yarn or a thicker thread than a lot of people will use with a milliner's thread then you will need a bigger needle. That's how it works guys. So I find the yarn, yarn donner works very well for this. Okay so that's what you've got in your kit and you've also got three different colours of cotton embroidery thread yellow for the centre and then two pinks for the outers and then we very cleverly cut the little leaves out of the green bit of felt. Do we have any questions so far Christopher before I... Well funny you should say that. Oh we might. Okay um, I can't see him so. M Locheran 767 on ah, yes. Instagram mm -hmm. says is it possible to make the table mats in two different colours? Um, Yes, obviously, yes, but you'd need to buy yourself an extra roll of the 
<laughs> an extra roll of the macrame cord. So when you buy a kit from us, it just comes with one roll, 87 meter roll of the macrame cord. But if you wanted to purchase another one, you could do mix and match and you could like make them different stripes. If you cut, cut the ends really carefully and glued in exactly the same place, you could do stripey ones, quite like that idea, to be honest. I also thought when I was making mine uh, yesterday that you could trap in little bits of embroidery cottons and stuff as well in between. I'd keep it all cotton, maybe. I don't, there's something about, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to have anything woolly on my table as a mat. <laughs> like... <laughs> the thought because there's wool everywhere in our house Julian. no no i know what, 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 but what i'm talking about as a table make? mat under your food what, like, like on your a, table like a crocheted no no mat. no well, anything like anything, anything. so anything macrame, at all. like cotton is fine and actually i'm going to talk to you later but i've, I've protected them with um, a waterproofing spray and cotton cotton doesn't worry me but i wouldn't want yarn i wouldn't want like woolly yarn on the, anyway i've gone off subject yeah. yeah so i was thinking that's right so um yeah trapping things in so i'd keep it all cotton and like you could trap in like cotton bits of cottons that you've got maybe different colors going around anyway i hope that answers your question but absolutely why not and there was another comment here oh yeah from um sheila harris yeah. <laughs> ironing me <laughs> question mark question mark question mark question mark well, I remember when you used to iron. I mean, you may not have done it for the last 40 years, 30 years. I, I remember you ironing in the kitchen. I remember you setting up the ironing board and ironing in the kitchen. Maybe it only happened once. Maybe because it only happened once, I remember it. Anyway, well, you'd be glad to know I take after you because I never, ever iron. I iron as I wear if it's absolutely essential. Now, um... Patricia on Facebook is asking asking to see the needle again. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So right, let's let try and get a close Well, I'm going to show you a whole packet of them as well. How's that for... Okay, well, let's... let's yes, let's go on then. Go to your close-up. Lovely, lovely close-up. I'm just going to make it Ooh, a little He's just bit. focusing to make it extra I'm special. Not, no, I'm just trying to... Bear with everyone. Oh, away. are we in lip sync today? I'm dying to know. So. Yes. But there's my little heart that's made from washi tape. That's my marker on the table, in case you're wondering why it's there. What's that got to do with the proceedings? Right, okay. This is the needle that's, that I use for my bullion stitch, okay, which is a yarn darner. Sorry about my dreadful nail varnish. Which is a yarn darner, okay? And these are the yarn darners that we sell, and these are the yarn darners that are in the kit. And I am using, they do go up in size, and I have to admit that I tend to use the two small ones the most, which is this one at the end, okay? Um, and of course, when you're doing this bullion, bullion stitch, as you'll see in a moment, it's just that you don't want this part of the needle to be too much bigger than the body of the needle because of the stitch and you're wrapping the yarn around it. Let's go on to it and let me show you what I mean. So I'm just going to start off with the centre of the rose. I've threaded up yellow onto my needle, as you can see, okay? And I'm going to start off with my first bullion stitch. So you come up to the top side of your fabric, your felt, and then you're going to go back down again and up again, and you're going to determine your stitch length. By doing this okay so my bullion stitch is going to go from there to there from where where the, the needle goes in and comes out again okay and I'm just going to push it through like that and then I'm going to wrap it around the needle now decide which way wrap around you want to wrap it I've been thinking about this recently actually and it depends on your thread because you don't in so wrapping around the needle if I do it this way I'm sort of unwinding the thread can you see that and you're losing the coil of the thread. If I'm wrapping it round this way, my thread stays far more wound, if that's a word, I don't know. It is a word, but you know what I mean, if that's what I mean. Um, and, it, and the stitch will look better, because there are my little rounds that are going to go around the, the thread. And then you want to look, and you want to see how many of these little circles, these little rounds that you've got wrapped around the needle, you need to fill up the space between here and here, all right? So your, your bullion stitch needs to, to match the needle's length that's gone underneath the fabric on that side, okay? So from there to there. 
Why well, is it called do... bullion? Oh, God, I don't know. Somebody I tell knew... us. <laughs> I don't know that. You need to Google. Right, so now I've just pulled the thread through all my little rings. I'm holding them under my thumb, okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to then pull it upwards and over, okay? And keep pulling and keep pulling. I want to try and get my fingers out there so you can see what's going on. Okay, and keep this as tight as possible, okay? I'm just going to pull it up a bit more that way. Okay. And then you can see all of my little stitches, hopefully, that have gone from there to there. Now I need to anchor it down. So I'm going to go and anchor it down again and back through. Like so. I've probably made it a bit long, actually, for this rose. I'm going to do another one here. Maybe I'll do it a little bit offset. Okay. I'm going to go in and up where I want the stitch to be. Let's just bring it over that way a tiny bit. Oops. So in and up like that. Okay. And then I think I figured out that wrapping it left to right is going to give me the best definition. That's the word I'm after. Definition on the needle for the stitch. <coughs> Um, the more you wrap, obviously, the longer the stitch will appear on this side and it might curl round if you make it a bit longer, which I quite like. So I'm just going to put plenty on there. Now, this is the point at which your eye of your needle needs to travel through all of the little rounds there. I think I've got it quite clear on there. So now I'm just going to put my finger back over the top and hold it because I like to sort of keep them, keep them neat. And then you're going to pull it up in the air. And then you're going to lay it down. Let's just get that other little bit of yarn, a little cotton out of the way. Can you see how that one's curled, actually? I Ooh. love that. I love that. Okay, and then I'm going to anchor it down again. Okay. So there is my little yellowy bits in the middle. I should, just think I should just do one more. Sorry. I'm going to do one more yellow before we move on. I'm just going to pull that a bit tighter as well. I don't want to see that bit of cotton there. Anyway, um, and then I'm going to go down and up again, I think, to Keep there. on your centre mark, Gillian, please. Keep on your oh, centre sorry, mark. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Swaying off. Um, I'm just going to go from there to there. All right. So, so this is why this eye is so important. You don't want a great big fat eye on your needle because it's going to... Now, when I'm wrapping these around... Oh, look, I've gone the wrong way. When I'm wrapping them around, left to right... Yes, that's it. What I often do is I wrap one and I put my, thing, my nail on it. Wrap one, nail. Wrap one, nail. Wrap one, nail. And then it keeps them neatly and in place. Also, I'm just going to go back again. Don't wrap them too tightly. So don't like... Urgh! Right. <laughs> that was a sound effect. <laughs> wrap them around loosely. Okay. Loosely. And that will give you... Um, a little bit of leeway and make it much much easier for you to then pull the needle through them okay let's just there we go so i'm just gonna again it, it really helps to pull pull this up in upwards all right upwards i'm just gonna get in the right position for you all sorry mm. There we go, nice and tight. And then you can, of course, get your nail and just like push your little loops around a little bit, okay? And then I'm just going to anchor that back down, like so. All right, so there's the center of my rose. Right, now then I'm very, very messy on the back and I'm sure any proper, proper embroidery teacher would tell you to do something completely different on the back. But this is what I'm going to do. And I just need to show you these little heart scissors that we sell because they're so cute and it's Valentine's Day. And I just thought, well, you know, let's use those. Right. So next thing. Oh, I've got another thing There's to show you now. Oh, There's a question. There's a question. Yes, yes, yes. Patricia yes. again. Yes. Why did, uh, why did you start with the stitch which you now want to hide? Why okay. did you want to... Why? No, no, no. I, I'm starting with the yellow. Okay. Yeah. And then I'm going to do the pink. Pink. Me, here oh, we go. Okay. And then I'm going to do the other pink around the oh. edge. Okay. And there's another question. Yes. Very, very important one from Catherine Keeling. Yes, on yes, Facebook. yes. Facebook. She's yes. saying, what was the name yes. of the glue that sticks <laughs> metal to fabric? Is she just like jollying you along? 
<laughs> Possibly. Possibly. Does she just want to hear you say it again? Gemtag for all your sticky needs. <laughs> yeah. um, maybe you didn't hear earlier, Catherine. Was it Catherine? Yes, I think so. Yes, I think um, she was pulling your... Was she yeah. pulling your leg? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, I want to show you something else while Ooh. we're here. Just as a little bit of an added extra. These things, embroidery threaders, okay? Um, it's made by Clover and we now sell these. Uh, they are in, they're needle threaders for embroidery thread, which is just a bit of a revelation, frankly, especially when you're live on air, because if you can't thread the needle, <laughs> it all goes to pot, okay? So you just thread that through the needle and then you've got this massive hole and ta-da, da 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 Oh, you've been burned by Martinez. Eh? She says, lol, the back is always supposed to be as aesthetically pleasing as I the front. I know. All right, okay, Welcome leave it. Welcome to the leave real it. world, though. Yes, no, I know. I'm just keeping it real for everybody. Um, okay, so now I'm just going to start with the pink. I'm not going to do the whole thing here, but I'm going to show you just, this is how you're going to build it up. Build it up. All right, so we're going down. We're going up. And look, the other thing I want to say is I expect there's people who do do this differently. I expect there are other ways of doing it. This is how I do it. OK, one, two. So so always like have a, a look at your stitch length that you're, you're creating. OK, and always make sure you've got enough of these little rings around your needle to cover the stitch length. OK, and then I'm just going to pull those through and I have to say the yarn darner works pretty well as you can see I don't struggle to pull them through okay and then I'm just going to lay down oh am I in the right place my little bullion stitch so I'm keeping my finger over it not so you can't see it just so I can keep it in the right place like so okay so there's my next one there Oop. all right I'll do one more um, Claire Bosworth on Facebook. Yes, these will all get this will get loaded up onto YouTube and other places. Oh, are you we're asking finished. if we? You, yeah, yeah, you can refer back to it. Oh gosh, absolutely yeah. yes. So I always go down and up where I want my stitch to be. And the other thing that's good is if you you don't do them all in alignment. Okay, so you kind of um, make them. What's the word I'm looking for? You, you start them in different places. So, so you can see that yellow one is there. So then I've started the pink one halfway down. It overlap, that's probably the word I'm looking for. Not a complicated word. Um, so you want them to overlap. Um, so although I'm starting this one in the same place, maybe I'll just make it slightly shorter so that my next one will overlap. Okay, and I think that makes the, the rows look more realistic. Okay, so that it doesn't look like you're just creating stripes of little petals and that it might be more rose looking so pulling it through again pulling it up okay and over oops and round can you see how that looks nice when it's just overlapping the other petal in inverted commas because it's not a petal it's stitch has anyone found out why it's called bullion stitch no, no nobody cares but we do know an interesting fact this week that a collection of wild rabbits is called a fluffle. Are you sure about that? Well, that's what Have you had is. any... Not a falafel, a fluffle, as in is fluff that, with but Ellie it, on Are you sure she just didn't make that up? Well, it's not the it is our daughter. Well, I don't she, think does, she does have quite well, a wild see, imagination. See what happens when I go around the other way? Isn't that interesting? It, it unwinds the, the cotton from the way it's been made. So always go, just check that when you're starting your stitches and left to right seems to be the way to go here. All right, so I'm just going to do this one as well. Let's just pop another couple on for good measure so it goes a bit more curly. Bring them through, oops, bring them through, up and over. Look at that, folks, it's coming together. <clears throat> All right, so I'm not going to do the last colour, but obviously you would then do the last colour around the outside. And then what you're going to do is you're going to trim round it, but you're going to trim two little leaves at the same time. So obviously that's just done 
your scissors. I mean, by all means, draw it on first. If Goodness, you feel... are those stealth scissors? What do you mean? Well, they're sort of black and stealth-like. What, you mean they look quite masculine? Mm, well, they look like they might be like a stealth bomber that can't be seen by... I don't know what you're by... on about. Can't be seen by radar. Keep on your mark, Gillian. Keep on your oh, mark. Oh, anyway, look, I haven't done the final layer, but I just want to show you. Just cut your little leaves out. Always cut them too big to start with and then trim them down would be my top tip with that. But that's what you're going to do. And then you're going to create your little leaves like that. Let me get all this gubbins out of the way. And then, finally, finally... There we go. You're going to stick it into place with its little leaves. And that, my friends, that, my friends, is all there is to it. <laughs> Seamless. <laughs> Seamless. I don't know what you mean about these. They're so cute. Well, Do you know I'm what? They're saying they're a bad sharp. thing. They're just, they just look like, um, they look like they're, they're like black and stealthy. Like stealth scissors. Anyway, they come in lots of colours, actually. They come in pink, red, purple, yellow, orange, blue, green. Oh. As well. Oh. Very sharp. Cool. Okay. Uh, so that, my friends, is all there is to it. I know. It's an easy one. It's a sticky, sticky one. We like those occasionally because it's just relaxing and easy to do. And you can make it with the kids. Well, you'd have to do the bullion stitch rose, probably. Yes, come on. Why has nobody told us why it's called bullion stitch? No, can someone Google that, please? Anyway, any more questions? Um, uh, no. About this? No. Okay. So, kits are available on our website. Choice of colours. <laughs> I actually know where those are. I don't know. Uh, choice of colours. Just add glue. Okay. Just add glue. Just add glue. Now... Next week is the, is it the 7th of February next week? Yeah, I think it is. No idea. Anyway, obviously Valentine's is coming up. I have already done a tutorial on how to make these, but we've ju I've just managed to uh, finish our new kit. Okay, so we have a brand new kit, Mexican Hearts kit, okay, that comes with, it's actually really good value. You get uh, loads of stuff in here. You get all of that yarn okay you get four neon tassels you get a packet of yarn donors and you get loads of brightly colored felt you get a whole wadge of it 30 by 23 centimeter squares and you've got one two three four five six of them so there's loads of stuff in this kit uh if you want to have a go now i did do a oh, tutorial don't, don't sorry don't those rustle things back. Paper, you're rustling you? you're don't rustling rustle. have you noticed as well this week i don't have my glasses on because i realized oh. that i wasn't really needing them because i'm short-sighted and i used to put them on when i looked at the camera and i thought well i don't really need to see the camera do i so the camera's no. a bit blurry but that's fine uh what was i saying you uh can i just uh <laughs> going back going back to the placemat oh yes yes uh lynn elmer on youtube yes youtube somebody commenting on youtube oh, we that's like good. it when you watch on youtube yes because it's better -er. yes um she yes. says uh love this what did you use to waterproof oh yes yes of course thanks lynn sorry Duh. um i use scotch guard Scotch guard. Um, no, don't. Oh, no, mind you. No, yeah, go on. No. Scotch guard for all Scotch your guard. waterproofing mm, needs. Yes. No, I've got to come up with a tag, new tagline. <laughs> don't want to get wet? Use Scotch guard. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. That's just off anyway, the top of my head, I'm not um, advertising. You might. Anyway, I use Scotch guard fabric water shield. Okay, I did two sprays, so droplets now sort of don't sink in. All right. I think you definitely would need to use this. Is it hydroscopic? Oh, what? What, this? Yeah. What does that mean? I don't even know what hydroscopic means. Google it. Are you asking me that? Or yeah, I am. Why are you asking me? Well, I'm, <laughs> well, I'm not allowed to ask questions. Well, what are does it mean? Are my questions not valid? No, 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 it's fine. But don't ask me questions I don't know what they mean. What is hydroscopic? Repels water. Yeah, in that case, yes. Um, other brands are available, and I did buy another one on um, the the Tinternet. I can't remember the name of it now, but I, ha I think this one works better. So 
So I'd go for something like that and definitely do them if you're going to use them on the table with food. Makes sense. Okay, so... James, James Glacier uh, wants some stealth scissors. Oh, well, James, that's very sensible. I mean, they're super sharp. They're good for poking people. Oh, no, I shouldn't say things like that. Um, and, yeah. And invisible to enemy radar. <gasps> Oh, God, that's reminding me of that dream I had the other night when I was trying to warn you that someone was going to throw you off a cliff and every time I warned you, you were invisible. Anyway, it's moving swiftly on. So new cliff. kit, love hearts, Mexican hearts. I'm going to show you how to make them again because we did it six months ago and I was looking back at it and it's fab, obviously, but we were in the old studio and our lighting wasn't as brilliant as it is here. Um, and we've sort of, I think we've, moved on a little bit haven't we, we christopher we, we have moved on a little bit <coughs> a little bit so and also i wanted to show you how to make specifically the ones that are in the kit now um so i will be showing you that again next week i'll be showing you more bullion roses can you just do a little close-up of them christopher oh maybe the other one the oh, other i like this the one. other shot i like this one well, you're I, using oh, this one golly. just get over it oh my goodness me all right okay well let's put him in the middle then um so I will be showing you again next week how to do it, but using a thicker yarn. Did you make that? Yarn. <laughs> you know I made it. Did you? And then Very I'm going good. to be showing you how to do the leaves and the little French knots and the blanket stitch. Um, and in the kit, you get the tassels already, but I will run through how to make another tassel. But I just thought it'd be good to do it again because obviously it's Valentine's Day soon. Um, and these hearts in Mexico, if you come back to me a sec, these hearts represent healing love and gratitude which i just think is well it doesn't get any better than that really does it we all need a bit of that right now so healing love and gratitude hearts is what we're going to be making next week they don't just have to be for valentine's day i think they're very much an all year round thing but seeing as it is valentine's i thought we'd do them again i know look i did an instagram poll saying who wants me to do this again who wants me to do something new and it was pretty 50 50 and i thought well, I can still do something new, but maybe just the week after. So these are coming next week. If you want to buy our kit for these, there is a limited number at the moment because supply is restricted because of stupid Brexit. OK, so we have a Say lot what? of stock. Controversial. We have a lot of stock stuck in customs at the moment. So um, we do have a fair amount of these kits but I'm sort of like sensing an urgency to get our stock if we want to carry on selling all these things. Anyway, that's a whole nother story, um, but we've plenty for now. So if you want a kit, do not delay would be my advice. And I will see you next week, unless there's any more questions. Christopher, uh, is there? Let me have a quick scan. Um, no, no, no. Oh. No. I need my full of lavender to make me sleep. Oh, Harry very Curtis. sensible. Putting lavender in. This kit does also come with the toy stuffing. Sorry, I didn't pull that, that out the pack earlier. It comes with the stuffing to go inside them as well. But you could certainly add your own lavender. That's a really nice idea, actually, isn't it? Perhaps we need some of that in here. Yeah. Anyway, is th without further ado, any more questions? I don't think there is. No, fabulous. All right. Well, enjoy your macrame table mat making. And uh, I will see you next week. Is that it? Are we done? We're done. All right. You're going to wave. Cheery bye. <laughs>